Hello. Hello. Hi, Lisa. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm fine. Sorry, I'm just uh, realized this light was on behind me there. That'll be better. <laughs> I am here. I'm not just a ghost. <laughs> <Good>. Okay. <clears throat> oh, you've still got sunshine where you are. Our, it's just started to cloud over here. Where are you? Uh, on the island in Duncan. Okay. Courtney. Yes. Oh, okay. And uh, I was just in a session and Mike said it's still cloud or it's cloudy in Nanaimo too. So like, uh, all right. <laughs> They said it was going to happen, but I didn't mean I had to believe it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here, I'll make you. Oh, thank you. I'm not going to be doing anything. Thank you. I'm not going to be doing anything fancy. I just really only just need screen share, but uh, I'm not going to do any breakout rooms or anything like that. So co-host is perfect. Perfect. Providing my 12 people, I actually know my 10 people show up. <laughs> we'll Hopefully see. More. Well, this, is, this is a pretty good time slot. Um, actually, it's great because uh, they, uh, it's not last thing of the day and they might even just be stopping for lunch while they hang out with me, which means yeah. they don't interact as much if they're, if they're lunching, but <laughs> they're at least here. So yes, yeah. we'll listening. But, now do you work with so you're in courtney do you work with um kara dawson i do yes yeah she's my uh we're good pals her and uh Alyssa pratt Alyssa pratt and i went to um we did our master's degrees together okay and uh th that's um yeah Alyssa's brother works for nides with me Roger. right right yeah. and of course their dad did too that would have been way before your time but yeah uh, yeah <laughs> <laughs> right i'd forgotten that her uh that Alyssa's brother had uh come back i because he lived in australia for a while did he not i'm not sure i don't i, I don't i might have that messed up but i i feel like there's an australian connection i do know that they lived in vancouver for a bit too before moving back to the island so i'm not sure right Oh, that's good. Yeah, I've got uh, a few connections in in Courtney, and I have actually been there in person <laughs> in the past. I don't know when that will start again, but I know uh, maybe one day. I do have an appointment for my first vaccine on Sunday, though. I'm so excited. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, I'm just I just can't wait. I you know the uh, like here. I don't know if it's the same across the island. It probably is, but I know my the next up age group um my cousin so they're over um well they're over 60 anyway uh they have an appointment for may the 8th so my if i had waited for for the government one with for the pfizer one i probably would have been about you know mid mid may or maybe like a month from now which isn't bad like that was that was good but i just um i had registered with a few pharmacies and this one with london drugs right here in town came up and i snapped up the last appointment <laughs> nice You're like, yeah my father-in-law just went today and got his and he's 72 so mm. right yeah. yeah it's been uh oh my god i just can't wait to be out of this time i know well, wow, that's brutal. I know everybody feels the same. It's almost redundant to say it is redundant to say. <sighs> Just to be able, no, I had a birthday no yesterday and to be able to like hug people again would be so nice. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But soon we're almost there. And then I'm assuming that it's going to be just like, um, you know, all the other things that you think, oh, this is I'll, I'll never forget this. And a, a few months go by and you go, oh, hey, I kind of forgot about that. <laughs> I'm really looking, I'm looking forward to that for sure. Yes. But, oh, well. Now, is there, I didn't look to see, is there a waiting room set up? For no, this? it just, they automatically oh, pop in. Yeah. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, they set it up great this year. It automatically is recording. It's on, yeah, the participants yeah. just jump in. It's so nice. That is nice. Yeah. 
No, I've been, uh, that is one good thing that's come out of the pandemic. I have sure um, appreciated getting to, um, like, not just Zoom for what it is. It's been great, but just people realizing, and I'm not going to do anything inventive with it today, uh, but um, I've seen some people just really dig in and, and really leverage the advantages of it as opposed to coming at it from a well it's the best that we can do right now you know Ooh. that that deficit mindset i because you know there's an awful lot of advantages to being able to to do these sorts of things this way um you know and and not just because it's the best second alternative that we have right I love my fitness classes are all online now. And I'm like, I don't want to go back to the in studio. Like it saves me so much time. I'll be like, Oh my God, my class starts in five minutes. I just go down the hall and change. Like I don't have to drive anywhere too. I'm like, no, this yeah. is great. Yes, <laughs> definitely. I haven't done too much live. I did do a couple of live yoga classes and I did really like it. Um, and I definitely, um, you know, it completely, not that I tend to be very self-conscious, but it did completely eliminate anything that I was worried about, or if I had to take a break or, you yeah. know, it just like, yeah, this is fine, but it was live, which I really appreciated. And then, you know, there's some YouTube ones that it's as if it's live and that's good too, but the actual live one was, it was kind of neat just to know yeah. that there was some other people doing the same thing as me at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. Like that as well. Were you at the technology conference in Nanaimo last, before we shut down last year? <laughs> oh, was it in October? I feel like it was in the, I'm trying to think what month it was in. No, I feel like it was in March before um, spring break and before we all like shut down. Uh, uh, no, I guess not. And it's okay. strange that I wouldn't have been. I don't know why not, because I, I do do things with Nanaimo too from time to time. But no, I, was, I don't think so, no. Okay. I'm going to say no, because I don't remember, <laughs> but that, that could have a lot to do with other things. <laughs> it's just been a crazy year, so who knows? <laughs> exactly, exactly. Hello, Annalie. This is a fun emoji, that or bitmoji, that's joining us. That's super cute. <laughs> Hi, sorry. Hi. No, no worries. Hi. You're first. I wish I had a prize for you, but I... Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Now, okay, so you're from Sides. Now, uh, Karen yeah. is at Sides too, isn't she? Karen yes. 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 Okay, she's signed up for uh, this. Oh, side. yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, Karen's the um, principal at Sides. Okay. Okay, yeah. right. Right, right, right. She's also my Facebook friend. But <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. I know she's, there's another conference too, like a management thing that she's been doing. So she's been back uh, and forth a lot today. Yeah, that's, so, yeah, that's challenging. Yeah. And that's the thing we, you know, we can subscribe to all of these things because we think, oh, that's great. I'll just do it from the office or I'll just do it from home. And then you, you still can't be two places at once. I know. I know. <laughs> no matter what. Yeah. And another connection, I have a, actually a couple of connections to sides. Um, Sally Morgan. Yeah. Uh, we went through school together, like okay. actual high school and stuff. And uh, the other connection I have is Crystal. Um, we did our master's together. And actually, funny, I was just talking about uh, the, the Nides and the Sides uh, people that I have connection to through that work. But Yeah, cool. Yeah. Did you do your master's up at VIU? Uh, no, Royal Roads. Oh, Royal Roads. It was a long time ago. I, I finished it in 2005. Oh, okay. And but Crystal, um, I think she's still there. She was, uh, she was at Sides when we were doing that work together. Crystal, what was, what did she do at Sides? <laughs> you would you ask. Know, or was she like what level? Like was she elementary or is she secondary? I feel like she was uh, sort of the middle years, like late yeah, early secondary. Yeah, she might be middle I don't recognize that. I'm new to Sides though this year, so oh, okay. I don't. And I don't know how much. Much staff you guys have we Either, yeah we like... have quite a bit now like I know in our staff meetings at least there's like 90 something oh my god oh yeah. okay yeah that's yeah. Like, that's like double what I thought we've grown a lot this year just because of the increased fair. enrollment yeah. so yeah, yeah totally fair yeah yeah 
we are a small group today, but I, I am expecting another, well, I would, 12, uh, I think 12 people were signed up, so I always account for attrition, so I'm expecting, oh, here yeah, we go. Yeah, and I'm sure some were going over a little bit from their last one. Oh, well, that's, that, and that's right, I'll, I'll hang out for a bit. It's not like, uh, it's going to be an action-packed uh, 45 minutes, yeah. it's going to be super low-key. <laughs> You want me to wait a few more minutes before introducing you then? Uh, yeah, let's hang out for a bit. Um, okay. Those, uh, the, the last two that just popped in, mm -hmm. just popped in together. So I suspect uh, Annalie is correct. It's uh, previous sessions, you know, going a yeah. little bit over. And, and people need to take a break and, you know, get a glass of water. And Go to the bathroom. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Actually, I will just also grab a water while I'm... Well, I say those words, I instantly got thirsty. <clears throat> okay. Oh, then we lost one. I shouldn't have gone for that water. <laughs> Okay, welcome to the last couple of people just popping on and we might just as well get started. I'll start really slow and- uh, <laughs> Here, I'll introduce you. So Fair good enough. morning, everyone. My name is Alyssa and I'll be the moderator for this session um, until it ends at, well, I'll just say uh, 1220. <laughs> if you have any technical issues, please reach out privately in the chat. There's a shared document for this session and I've already put the link into the chat. Um, so you can put any thoughts, ideas and notes or questions that you have there. Um, and thank you for choosing this session. Is bias necessarily bad? I'd like to introduce Lisa Reed. Over to you. <laughs> All right, thank you, Alyssa. All right, welcome to this very small crowd so far, but the session is being uh, recorded. <clears throat> Um, the thing that's going to be a little bit of a challenge with it is that I was hoping to just have some real free flowing conversation <laughs> around this. So that puts an awful lot of pressure on uh, the few people in the room who are here as participants. But I'm just going to start in and really this is just something that's come out of my head recently 
that I've been thinking about and I wanted to have a conversation about it more than wanting to present something from a particular point of view. But it's just some thinking that I've been doing. So I do have a slideshow. It's not very interesting, but I'm going to pop it up here. And um, I'm just going to walk you through my thinking. And then uh, anytime if you want to jump in with uh, a comment or um, a question or a reflection or anything like that, that would be great. I'm not going to put you on the spot, like I say, because we are a small number today. But uh, I would very much appreciate and love to know what you think about uh, sort of what I've been thinking about. So let's, uh, let me screen share here first. Oh, um, and I actually should uh, also tell you. Um, my role in my school district is as a technology support person, teacher. And um, so these things sort of come out of that, um, that whole realm of my thinking started with some digital resources that I'm going to share with you that I was looking at. And then that idea that um, the layer of technology sometimes gives us that false sense of anonymity. And it just made me sort of think about all these things. So anyway, you'll you'll see where you'll see where I'm going here in a minute. Okay, so uh, slideshow. There we go. Okay, um, so I started with looking at exactly what the definition of bias is, and the thing that was sort of funny to me, and this is just a straight up definition uh, from a Google search. It's the first one that came up. Um, so I didn't, <laughs> I, I don't know if I was influenced to choose it because it was the first one. Um, and, uh, so my thinking about this was that we so frequently think of bias as being a negative thing and it so frequently is, don't get me wrong. In, in at no time am I ever going to assert any sort of, uh, you know, positive light to things like systemic racism, for example, it is bad and will always be bad and you will never change my mind on that. But I wanted to just talk about bias and what sort of slants are or attracts our attention in one way or the other. So I started with the um, definition of bias, which is in the main kind of still uh, coming from a negative point of view. Uh, it, this definition references prejudice, uh, unfairness, um, one thing over another, partiality. Um, however, then it gives me a couple of other things that uh, aren't negative, like in, in the lawn bowling sense, if you what, we, what I used to call body English, if you give bias to a ball, uh, you will have a different strategy. So it's not it's neutral in that regard. And I, I thought that was interesting. Uh, and this is just uh, from Wikipedia, um, the more sort of common definition that we have for it. And then I thought about this. Uh, th so this is slightly different. This is from, you know, sort of a psychology mindset, what positivity bias refers to. Um, and I don't need to read the definition for you, but I thought that was interesting. That was sort of that shift in thinking of uh, even though it sort of explains a lot about um, systemic racism and internalized misogyny, that if we um, know in our, let's say in our hearts, that something is negative or impacting us negatively, but we have been encouraged or coerced to still accept it as a positive thing. So I thought that was interesting. And here's where I'm going to jump off today. And let me explain this to you and it will all become clear in just a sec. So I want to show you where this idea uh, um, originated from and what sort of spawned my thinking in this vein. And I'm going to use a digital product uh, to exemplify it, but I want to explain why it looks the way it, do it does. So I chose, I particularly chose a word that it has an awful lot of um, negative connotation, a lot of baggage to it. And it was just interesting to me what happened when I looked at that word from a different vantage point. So that, so this is the word that I chose today to talk about. Um, it could have been any, any other word. And I think this would be a really interesting activity to try with a variety of different words. Okay. Um, so I chose colonization because 
um, we've been doing an awful lot of talk about truth and reconciliation in my district and across the province and across the world. And um, colonization has started to, um, not started to, it is, uh, it has uh, a lot of negative connotation and it even is sort of flung around almost like an insult in some ways. And so that was, so I particularly chose that word that was not um, neutral. And so here's just um, when I did a Google search for colonization, just in Google, I got uh, about, <laughs> I love that, about 794 million results. Uh, and just, you know, roughly just ballparking it. <laughs> Sorry, that cracks me up too. Uh, and then this was the first thing that, that came up um, was sort of colonization and then a connection to colonialism and what does that look like and there was some images that went along with it including monarchy and, and some apartheid propaganda and so it instantly sort of took us to that even more negative space when we searched it up um, and then the top results uh, for colonization to search further um, number one was a wikipedia and then just sort of a variety of, of different, uh, however, they, however they colonize on Google is how they come up. And then these were the videos that came up uh, in that same search. And so very much um, what you would expect, uh, especially given the conversations that are going on in our province uh, recently. And, and if you were to say the word colonization, that is probably, um, these are the sorts of images that are gonna come up in your brain, I imagine. So then I clicked on the top uh, Wikipedia um, article and took a quick look at colonization. And then if you notice um, sort of three lines down there in italicized, it gives the disambiguation, which uh, Wikipedia is so good about that, uh, that in case you're confused, here's something else that it could be. And this relates exactly to the activity that uh, I was thinking about. Because in this case, the disambiguation Wikipedia is asking you to think about is, uh, do you mean sort of the, the overtaking of, of a country or an area by oppressors, or do you mean uh, in biology, things that happen when, when bacteria um, multiply and things like that. And so uh, this, and this is just the Wikipedia article on colonization from a biology perspective. And this is where I started. So I've kind of taken you on a backwards journey because I, I did this, I looked at these pages after I did the thing that I did. <laughs> which is this. So um, the other thing that you need to know about me is uh, part of my job is with focused ed resources as part of their professional learning team. And my job is to support the digital classroom bundle that every school district and most independent school districts in the province uh, access. And there are uh, products within the digital classroom that uh, don't necessarily get a lot of use. And this is one of them. And this is how I tripped across this because I was doing a um, workshop one day on the Gale products. And my absolute favorite thing in the Gale products is the topic finder. Okay, so <laughs> let me pause for a sec. A, just in case it wasn't clear, uh, I'm not representing Focused Ed today. I just wanna give you context. Two, even if I was, I wouldn't be selling you this product. You already have it in your school district. Three, if you want to ask me about focused ed resources at any point, we can absolutely do that too. I think this, when I say this is free flowing today, this is going to be super free flowing. Um, and that was three, so this must be four. Uh, this product, like I say, uh, I, I came across it a number of years ago and I, I just don't think it gets good enough press but it was just such an, a neat package for what I wanted to share. Okay, so if you don't know the Gale products, very simply, they're just databases, but they've divided them into three categories, Canada in context, science in context, and global issues in context. I already know you can see where I'm going with this <laughs> because I'm going to look at the, at the search term through the bias or through the lens of those three points of view. And that's, that's where, that was my jumping off point for this topic was I thought, well, we need to look at this 
differently. And then the fourth one that's on your screen there, the power search, um, that searches across all three of the uh, products, okay? So let's put it all together. In the, in the 10 minutes that I've been talking, I've already come to the conclusion. <laughs> no, don't worry, there's lots more slides. Um, so I chose the term colonization. I ran it through the topic finder and you're gonna see what that looks like in a minute if you don't already know it. If you do, you're way ahead of the game. Uh, and then I'm gonna compare what each of those looks like through that, that lens or that bias of the point of view from which it was searched. Um, so topic finder, when you enter in the search term, uh, it generates a visual representation of all the places that that term or connection to that term uh, can be found. You, I like it as a wheel. You can also look at it at, in a different graphic uh, representation. Um, but here we go. So this one that you're going to see, the very first one is the search term colonization. And I've taken it through the Canada topic finder wheel. Okay, ready? Here we go. So it looks like that. So, and I'm going to show you what this looks like live too, because this is actually a really interesting interactive piece, but I didn't want to focus on the product because I wanted to focus on the topic. Um, but each of those, as you mouse over or hover over each of those terms, uh, it will pop out a variety of articles that relate exactly to that. So, um, and then those faded pink disclosure triangles, there's actually more stuff under there, uh, more links, but in this case, the term would be in a secondary presence for want of a better word. So uh, I'm just gonna blast through these and then we're gonna look at them all again in a minute. But just to give you uh, a, quick, a quick look, so this was Canada in context, the search term colonization, this was the result that I got next. Uh, I did the exact same search term in global contexts, uh, global, sorry, global issues in context, and it looks like this. Same product, same search term, this is what came up. And then finally, in the science in context, when I searched colonization, I got a whole different return because obviously the science point of view is going to have a much different uh, lens than social sciences or humanities or um, a particular connection to, uh, in this case, the country of Canada. And then here's what I got, and I'm gonna compare all four of these together, but when they're all four together on one screen, it does get a little bit crowded. So I don't know how well that's gonna to translate to the device that you're uh, viewing this from, but let's see. And so the last thing I did was to run colonization again as a search term through the power search, which combines all of those. And so that was interesting to see, even though it, it is looking at all three of those um, products, all three of those subsets of the same uh, organization, uh, how does it come back with different results? Uh, and is it leaning more one way or, or the other? Is um, So let's look at all of them together. Oh, and you know what I didn't do? Is I didn't label these, but I think it'll be obvious. So I'm gonna pause here for just a sec to give you a chance to, um, to take a look at each of those and think about, so the last one um, on the very bottom corner, the bottom uh, right corner of your screen, that's the power search one. That's the one that was supposed to encapsulate all of these into one search. And the other bottom one is the science one, Canada's top corner and global issues is, is the middle one, I'm pretty sure. So just take a quick look at these and I'm going to pause here for a sec while you're looking and um, maybe encourage you to share a comment, a reflection, um, a thought. But I won't even make eye contact. I'll just let you, <laughs> let you decide if you would like to share something out loud. Hi Danica, I see you popped in. 
Yeah, sorry, I was a little bit late. So if my comment probably wouldn't be relevant, but I'm just here to observe. Oh I'll yeah. Pipe, I'll pipe in once I understand what's happening. <laughs> Uh, well, this is directly out of my brain, so uh, you know I don't know if that will be very. So clear. maybe I won't be able. Maybe I won't be able to. <laughs> That's really giving me a lot of credit. pressure's on yeah. nobody's taken it i know i know i wish i'd popped in earlier so that i could uh, so maybe just really quick to catch me up these are your own search yeah tools it's, that you've kind of it's not my own tool the tool is right from um gale uh databases it's just a tool that i really like um but what all i did very simply i just ran the same search term colonization through each of the different categories of databases that they have. So the, the first one, top left, the database is Canada Issues in Context. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've used that one before, but I, how did you get this wheel? That's my... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's what I'm missing. Is, it's like the inner wheel. How that does that come out? <laughs> Okay, let's actually take a look at this then, because uh, it really doesn't matter what order we do any of this stuff in. And I'm I, sorry. No, 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 no. I wondered if that was going to be confusing, actually. And it's just, um, I, it's just something that I love so much. So let's go here. So it's from the Focused Ed BC Digital Classroom. Go down to Gale. Uh, I'll go, I'll start with Canada. So I click on Canada. I log in because it likes to make you do that regularly. And then if I go to, so for each of these, it's in the same place uh, for each of them, go to advanced search and then go to topic finder. And then, um, Let's do a different word just for fun. Actually, I'm going to do this one is my is my favorite one. This is usually the one that I do. Um, and I'll tell you why, because I, I started um, talking about this. I know that it looks weird. I started talking about this from a different point of view, and then I sort of got hooked on this bias idea. OK, so I put in the search term Pokemon and I'll explain why in a minute. This is the one view that you get. This is the tile view and I don't like it. I think it's stupid. I like the wheel view better. Um, but if you like the tile, oh. view, you can use the tile view. I've never and, even tried to change that. I I've been here, but I've never even. Uh, okay. So then okay. if I go to the wheel. So, I'm with you. Yeah, good. Perfect. So this one's live. And I can show you the other features in it, uh, even though I know this isn't a talk about Gale Topic Finder, but I just do love it so much. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you what my other purpose for it is. So this example and why it's Pokemon is because what I've suggested to teachers, and you could do this with the bias point of view too, I think it would be super cool. Um, imagining you have that student uh, who perseverates on, in this case, Pokemon, and try though you might, you cannot get him or her to talk, write, draw, share about anything other than Pokemon. It could be Fortnite, it could be any number of things. Um, and then, so my thinking was, let's just do a search on that. Okay, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to support your obsession with Pokemon. We're going to do a search on it. But I want you to take a look at some of the other things that are still related to your favorite topic, but can you find some other connection to do some other thinking outside of your one channel, right? So that was, that was sort of, that's a really encapsulates that in a really brief thing. But just to finish um, this off, so what happens in the product when you're in Gale, if you click on any of those segments of the wheel or the tile, you get, um, articles uh results relating to that topic um and in this case i got 22 articles that relate to video game industry byline i mentioned earlier these disclosure triangles so if i open those there's even more stuff and it gets really tiny but you can see that as i mouse around the um 
a key word uh, appears in the center of the wheel. So if I click that one, uh, I get two, <laughs> appropriately, I get uh, two articles on addiction to Pokemon and Pokemon Go, which is hilarious because my brother and his wife and my daughter actually play Pokemon Go together and they're all adults incidentally. So I, so it's a thing anyway. So that's the product that I was using to, um, talk about, whoops, not that to talk about, um, bias from a less sort of negative point of view and, and not to say that in any way I want to discount any of the negativities of bias, but I just think, um, if we think about it a little bit more critically, uh, there's actually good reason to be clear and explicit about the bias through which you are looking at a topic, but that it's relevant and important. And so that brings us back to, uh, in a nice circle, <laughs> brings us back to these circles, which compare um, the lenses of um, nationalism, science and internationalism in which to view this topic. And then um, I guess the other thing I would do with this wheel down here, which was the power search, what that searches all three of those databases, uh, then I would ask some questions about, you know, why do you think this section is still uh, the biggest and the most predominant, even though it didn't appear in these two wheels, but it did appear in the science one? How come it has more weight than some of these other sections in the other two wheels? Things like that. I think those are the sorts of questions that I think I would ask. Is there anything else about that? Okay, let me just uh, pop the, um, or actually no, uh, maybe the, maybe I'll just stretch this rather than full screening that. Okay, so next, um, in thinking about this, so I wanted to share a couple more resources with you that I found directly around bias. And what I didn't get to, because I didn't really know uh, who my, all the people of my audience would be, um, I wanted to think about some really deep and uh, effective critical thinking questions around this. And I didn't get that far, but I will share the resources with you that I had that I thought would lead uh, a, a discussion about this really well. So, oh, I didn't like that one. Ooh, okay, let's go down here this way then. Um, so then um, I took a, a search uh, back on Google again, uh, this time only getting approximately 517 million hits. Uh, I always think that's funny that they give the count. Uh, so I took a look at bias uh, itself and the definition of, of bias and what it means and sort of, and again, like even right from the, the beginning of a Google search, you can enter that conversation about, okay, why do you think in all three Google searches that I've shown you today, in every case, the top hit was a Wikipedia article. Now, I personally don't have anything against Wikipedia um, at all, and I use it myself all the time. But there are people who have very strong opinions about Wikipedia, especially in a scholarly pursuit. Why do you think that is? Those are the sorts of questions that I would ask my students um, to, to think about. And even just from that very jumping off point of what are your top 10 searches? What are your top 10 pages look like? Uh, what, if you scroll far enough along, do you get so far removed from your original search or does it suddenly come back around again? There's all kinds of questions you could ask about, uh, just about that and things, and it, that would lend to conversations too around things like targeted ads uh, that you get on your social media now all the time. And how does, how does that artificial intelligence pick up on your biases? I think there's a lot of richness in there uh, that would make some really interesting conversations. This site, um, I'm going to show you this. I actually have this up live. This is just a screen capture of it. This is super cool, and I'm sure you've seen uh, this before or some form of, of it, but this is where I really wanted to get to in this conversation today was um, the effect that media bias has on our, our thoughts and feelings and opinions. So I'm gonna switch to the live view on that. 
Okay, there we go. And this is just set, I'm just gonna stretch this a little bit more. You wanna cover your faces. Okay, there we go. So this um, is a really cool site and it can be uh, stretched a little bit more, but it gives you, and now, I, I mean, okay. So this is almost like an inception moment, but who is it decided what was the most extreme left what was the most extreme right like there's a whole bunch of background thinking and conversation you have to have about that um, because it wasn't just some some guy somewhere or some person somewhere just randomly slapping these down based on his or her opinion uh there there's a whole bunch of you know science that goes in behind all this but in any event um so this rates from the the most extreme left to the most extreme right and from original fact reporting, so they go out and find the story and tell you about it from uh, going all the way down to it's completely fabricated or to borrow, you know, whose catchphrase, it's fake news. Um, let me just increase this a little bit just to show you. There's so much here, like this is, this is a whole unit of study all on its own. But as I, I'm just gonna move in just a little bit because I want to sh make sure that I tell you that each of these dots is also some publication. Um, so the um, logos that you recognize, they're all there and, and, ease, and you can see where they lay in the whole landscape of um, neutral, far left or far right, but you can also find all kinds of other little um, publications here. If you just mouse over them, this is something called News Punch. I don't know. But what you could do, let's suppose you wanted to do a study where you just looked at the middle or balanced bias news reportings and, you know, find 12 um, publications that that fall in this category how, and then find one news story that they all share. How, how did you see examples of how they were in alignment with their stance on this article and compare it to, like I say, they're your, your teachers, you don't need to tell me how to, how to think like a teacher, but that's what I think when I see something like this and it sort of makes my eyes light up and think, uh, like I say, you could spend weeks just talking about this website and uh, how the news we get is very much filtered through the bias of the people who are presenting it to us, is that necessarily a bad thing? Uh, and which is, you know, sort of what sparked off my thinking about this today. So for example, uh, if I wanted to know, let's just take COVID-19 because that's all I can think about right now. Uh, if I wanted to know um, about COVID-19 from a science-based point of view, uh, then I might look for a scientific journal in the center there. If I wanted to know about how is COVID-19 affecting the environment, sorry, the economy, I might find myself searching over into the right, into the more conservative um, financials area, still maybe still science-based, but with that financial leaning, maybe I want to know how is COVID-19 affecting um, the family unit. I might find myself searching more over towards the towards the left. That's my own bias about how I think uh, things are presented and, and people present uh, information. But anyway, so that was um, the media bias chart. And um, I think it's really cool. And I think there's a lot of richness here. And even as you investigate around the whole outside of this as well, you can uh, filter uh, you can set the bias range, which I think it's hilarious that there's a term, a term, the bias range. And, uh, and then these um, color coded outlines just sort of give you, for, so for example, you're going to look for anything within that green um, border that is going to be the most balanced, even if it skews left or right, it is the most balanced and the most factual. Because remember, there was, there was two things. Uh, and I think that's really important too, that that bias isn't just left or right, good or bad, high or low. It has this other axis as well. And this does a great job of showing that in this case, the other axis is 
uh, factual information. Um, anyway, so those are the things about that. I thought that was a super cool site and I really liked it. And I also wanted to show you one more site. Here it is. Um, this one I thought was really interesting. This one made me think. Um, this is seven forms of bias and this happens. Let me just pull it in a little so you can see all of it. Okay, this happens to come from Boston Public Schools, but don't uh, hold that against it. And I'm just going to slide my this out of the way. There we go. Okay, so I did some thinking about this. And here is what I came up with the seven forms of bias in instructional materials. And I don't know how well you can see that from your screen. There we go. Um, so I'll just give you a, a little short. Actually, I can. You don't need to see the title anymore. So let me just increase that a tiny little bit more and roll that up there. That's maybe a little better. Um, so the seven categories are invisibility, stereotyping, imbalance and selectivity, unreality, fragmentation and isolation, linguistic bias and cosmetic bias. So take a sec to read that over and then I am going to challenge you uh, to come up with an example for each of those that would represent a, I, I am hesitating to say positive, but would represent an alternate point of view to that thing. So these examples on here are mainly negative in the sense of um, these seven biases have harmfully impacted um, communi communities of, um, of whatever description over time. And I'm going to challenge you to come up with some examples of where these particular biases are not having a negative impact, I guess, for want of a better word. Okay. Okay, so just to give you an idea of what I was thinking um, about uh, just before we get ready to wrap this up. Um, so for example, uh, I, <laughs> some of the ones that I came up with are a little bit controversial and I don't want to, I don't want to give you the wrong impression. So let me look at the last one uh, about cosmetic bias. And it talks about um, the illusion of equity uh, as a marketing strategy. And here's the example that I came up for that one that might be uh, for, I don't, I, I, again, I'm hesitating to say positive reason, but anyway, for the opposite reason. And the example I came up with was catfishing. <laughs> that sounds really weird. It, I came up with catfishing, not in the sense of the Neve, um, you know, the that show that Neve did on MTV. I don't mean to take advantage of people. But there's sort of a newer um, definition of catfishing where it, it all it really means is you putting your best face forward. So when I, even though I'm in my house today, I didn't come to the Zoom session in my jammies and without makeup on. I did my best to, <laughs> to present myself in, in the most flattering light. Uh, and so to me, uh, cosmetic bias uh, is not necessary. That would be an example of when it is for, um, more, 
more positive intention. That's sort of what I'm getting at. Um, let, let me just run, run down the list and I'll give you my other stupid examples and, and you can take them for what they are in the couple of minutes that we have left together. Um, so under invisibility, the thing that came to my mind was something that has started to actually irritate me a little bit. In, um, so you're watching the news and a TV commercial comes up for um, allergy medication, let's say. All of a sudden, I'm noticing, and I don't watch a lot of TV. I do, don't get me wrong, I do watch a lot of um, Netflix and, and Amazon Prime, but I don't watch a lot of cable TV. So I don't see a lot of commercials. What I've noticed the last few times that I've had the news or something on and the commercials have come up, I thought, okay, they are trying too hard. Every single commercial has um, a biracial couple, a transgender person, a differently abled uh, person for no reason. And um, they're just really making this, and I really try not to sound inflammatory, um, but I don't know that that serves those communities well as a rep representation to just force fit them into, uh, like I say, an, an allergy commercial for no particular reason. It's like they're trying too hard. So anyway, that was my, I, and I'm just really hoping that I'm not, I'm saying this quickly and I'm aware that I may be treading into offensive waters and I don't mean to be. Um, stereotyping, I'm just gonna move on. Uh, stereotyping, sometimes I think that stereotypes are true for a reason. They help us sort of short circuit that, that lengthy investigation time. And sometimes they, it is a helpful tool to be able to call in a stereotype uh, because it will give you context. And anyway, uh, so that's that. Uh, imbalance and selectivity, I was thinking of uh, in the attempt to eliminate the negative aspects of competition and we move to everybody gets a participation ribbon. Uh, I'm not sure that that served uh, those communities well as well. So that, that was my thinking on, on that one. On the end reality um, bias, I had, this is sort of a, this is sort of a weird one. But I was thinking about this um, the other day and someone referenced the Underground Railway and that um, to me has always just been a huge source of nationalistic pride that uh, we played our role in the emancipation of slaves with the Underground Railway, Railroad. And we did and I, and I still am and that's a really good thing. But the reality of life for those African Americans uh, or people of color that came up from the slave trade into Canada uh, was not, it wasn't like they got an all season pass to Disneyland when they got here. Their lives here were, in a lot of cases, uh, not a whole lot better. And we have this sort of this glorification of the Underground Railroad and Railway and, and things like that that maybe mm, we need to take a harder look at before we just pat ourselves on the back. And um, fragmentation and isolation. Um, this one actually in a sort of a similar vein, I was thinking um, that as a special or a set aside, sometimes we do need to do that. And my example for that was a Holocaust survivor. We would need to put that group of people in a separate and other category because their voices are the only voices that matter in that conversation and they should maintain that category of, of, of um, otherness or uniqueness, uh, not, not to be isolated and fragmented, but to be held up in, uh, in a way that is um, different than anybody else because nobody else has had that experience. Um, linguistic bias made me think of our use of um, non-gendered pronouns and the movement that is ever so slowly but importantly coming forward and and people understanding and having those like for example i had a conversation with somebody the other day who said but uh you know i'm a cishet male why do i need to use my pronouns it's obvious and my response was very simply because we don't want to give the impression that there's a normal because that's what you look like and that's how you present yourself and then everything else is something other we are all we are all pronouned how we want to be pronouned and there is not just one standard and everything else is sort of a specialty offshoot and then i already <laughs> talked about catfishing for whatever reason i don't know why that was my example on that one but anyway it was 
And that brings us to 1216. So I almost hit my uh, hit my mark. I don't usually go over, but in my defense, we did start a little bit late. <laughs> so um, let me uh, stop screen share here and bring my attention back over here. Is there anything else anybody would like to ask or tell or share? And I did all of that talking and even though I did wait a little bit, I have not given you very much opportunity to interject. So I will stop talking now. I just don't want to take over. I just popped in. I just popped into a couple of other sessions just to see. And I mean, this is a topic just personally that has always been relevant and something to point out for students, no matter what. Um, what age I talk about it with my six year old when we talk about, you know, the books uh, that we're reading and, you know, the shows that he's watching and it's, it's something that I think the more you have conversations about I've never seen the breakdown that you just showed I'd love to have that, um, that image, uh, just because it is so important to understand that no matter what as teachers we're talking about, there is implicit bias. And uh, that's something that, you know, through English, through social studies, as I've been teaching, it's just, it's there. So to acknowledge it is something that teaches, right? So to acknowledge that, to get students to understand that no matter who you are, there is bias in what you're receiving and how you're receiving it. So that's a big thing for me, for my students to understand is that they are coming to their experiences with their own bias implicit in them and acknowledging that and understanding where that where they are in that helps them to receive that information so that's a, just a really good reminder I think and I've I really like that breakdown because I've never thought of bias as having different parts to it so I right. quite enjoyed that one so thank, thank you for that yeah thank you and I think that that's such a good example of that um you know just because I know you know, let, let's say my point of view is I'm a, a, a really far right conservative and I'm looking at an article that's from a clearly left leaning liberal um, point of view. But does that mean there's not good stuff in it just because I know it's a liberal point of view? Uh, does, do I just discard it and refuse to listen to it? Or do I look at it with a critical eye? Because like you say, you know where it's coming from, you know where your standpoint is. That doesn't mean that you can't, you know, get something from it or learn something from it anyway. Yeah, thank you. Good, I'm glad that was useful. And yes, um, uh, my slideshow has all the links to all the pages that I that I oh, use. Perfect, nice. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm I'm happy to to keep chatting. I just on the on behalf of the BCDL, I just want to thank you so much for presenting today and for being part of our symposium. That was great. I'm thank glad you. I popped in. I am Thanks too. Thanks for stealing my job there, Danica. Yes. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Lisa. Thank oh, you. you're so welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Okay. No, I guess that's it. They're they're not going to talk. They're going to go. <laughs> She put me on the spot. I felt like right when I got in, Lisa. Yes. Oh. I was well, not ready. That's funny. We were having a discussion last night. Um, I went for a socially distanced drink with a friend, and we were talking about that last night. Even like who you follow on Instagram or whatever. Like if they don't have the same like opinions of you, like you're not going to follow them. You know what I mean? Like even the people yes. that you follow, like you're only going to follow those people that kind of share some kind of. Yeah, the same kind of belief system or biases that you have yourself. Yeah. Yeah, that's a big one for social studies, uh, talking about the historical perspective and any topic that we talk about. I mean, it is really hard to get the other side of the story for a lot of uh, issues and events and people. And those conversations are just really interesting to have with students um, mm -hmm. and just having them understand that what you're reading in the textbook that was published 30 years ago is not reality. If yeah. you had a camera crew there, it would not be on the news as it is described. And just getting them to understand and reading and looking at things a little bit more critically and thinking, okay, this is what it says, but what does it really mean? And, and who is saying it, Yeah, <laughs> right? Like the, yeah. And Social I think media is such a good example. I, I had um, like on Facebook, uh, just sort of during the early Trump years, I had 
a friend who was from Florida, is from Florida. I'm sure he still lives there. <laughs> and I kept him, we were friends and I, and I liked him. And that was one reason why I kept him uh, for a long time on my page. Well, I kept him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know that sounds weird. <laughs> yeah. and, and didn't delete him. And then, you know, he sort of started to get fired up and, you know, a real right uh, winger. And that was okay because he was a really intelligent guy. And he was also a teacher and really intelligent guy. And I really appreciated getting, as you say, the other side of the story, but eventually uh, I, I couldn't take it. It was just, and you know, I fully admit that it was because we disagreed on just about everything. And he would just go for the jugular in, you know, a logical and well-reasoned argument, but with my other friends, he would come on. And I realized exactly um, what you said, Alyssa, that the majority of my friends are people like me. And so they would come into a conversation talking about, yes, but you know, what about the, the education process for the children? What about health advocacy? You know, whatever it might be, the, the things that we lefties would yeah. care about and talk about us liberals. And then of course he would, he would go for the attack. And then I thought, no, I can't keep seeing my friends slaughtered. So I had to eject him, but <laughs> though it's hard, it is really hard to listen to that other side when, you know, from that logical, critical thinking point of view. Yeah. It's interesting. And it's, I mean, just having that conversation and just even thinking about it and, and trying to question your own bias as your, as, as you said, on your Instagram, on your Twitter, like, who are you following? Who are you reading? And sometimes it's hard when I think about the topics that I'm, I'm looking at, or, you know, interviews with people. And I think where, where are they getting their information from? Because it's not anything I'm looking at, or if I did hear that, I would know that it's incorrect. Mm -hmm. So where, where is that disconnect? Where are they, um, in their search for information. So sometimes it's hard for me to, to really understand. And I purposefully go out and try to find those pieces of information. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's interesting for sure. It's hard to put away your own bias of, I, I think kind of, yeah, feeling like that lefty, <laughs> like <laughs> really, really? <laughs> yeah. 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 It, yeah, it is for sure. <laughs> for sure. Oh man. All right. Anyways, I'm going to go have a quick bathroom break before the next 1230 session. So good, good. I'm going to zip out. In Thank death. you again, Lisa. <laughs> yeah. It's lovely to see you, Lisa. Yeah, you too. Thanks okay. again. Bye. Bye. Bye.